A two hour standoff in Bell County yesterday is leaving a lot of people asking what happened. We have the details ahead. Plus, is the NCAA cutting ties with the state of North Carolina? We'll let you know. And Hillary Clinton talking about her pneumonia diagnosis. It's all happening on this Tuesday, September 13th. Early Texas Today starts right now. Start here. Expect more. This is Early Texas Today. Good morning and welcome to Early Texas Today. I'm Imani Payne. We begin tonight in Bell County where a standoff that tied up deputies for almost two hours is now over. It all started with a family disturbance just before four yesterday afternoon. A woman told investigators that her husband assaulted her while she and her children were in the house. Her husband then barricaded himself inside the home, which is located in the 3200 block of Sally Circle in Kempner. Deputies say the husband fired a shotgun multiple times, but luckily no one was hurt. We had an armed subject uh, surrender. Nobody got hurt. Uh, the family's going to get to stay. Uh, all our deputies are going home and we'll get him some mental uh, evaluation. At the center of all of this was taken in for a mental evaluation. It's unclear if any charges will be pressed. His family was allowed to return home. A man wanted for a double murder in Temple is waking up behind bars. 20-year-old Justin Slayton was arrested this weekend in connection with the shooting deaths of two men back in April. Three months ago, police arrested another man, 18-year-old Lupe Chapa, for those same murders. Investigators tracked down Slayton in San, in San Angelo. DPS says he's a known gang member. They also say he was on the top 10 most wanted list here in Texas. And Colleen police want your help finding a man who has gone missing for the second time in a month. 75-year-old Herman Parrish disappeared from his house on Cloud Street around 1 a.m. on Friday. That's when his wife called 911. Parrish is the same man who disappeared back in August when she said he was showing signs of Alzheimer's. As some, as some of you have pointed out online, he is also a registered sex offender. Anyone with information should call the Colleen Police Department at the number on your screen. Authorities in Texas are trying to figure out who killed a family of three over the weekend. The victims were found this past Saturday inside their home in Bestrop, which is about 30 miles southeast of Austin. Deputies say the victims were a married couple and had a three-year-old son. The family's official cause of death has not been released. Deputies don't believe the public is in any danger. Police are now one step closer this morning to finding a man who they say intentionally ran over a woman in Houston. That woman is now fighting for her life. Police say they found the truck that was involved in the horrific attack. Authorities say the victim, San Juanita Herrera, suffered cuts and head trauma after a driver hit her several times with his truck Sunday night. Officers are currently looking for her former boss who is suspected of driving the car. He is described as an elderly Hispanic male. He was trying to kill her. It was no doubt about it. We saw her running and the car hit her from the back behind and ran over her and came all the way down here, turned around, sped up and ran over again. Herrera, believed to be in her late 30s, is listed in critical condition with life-threatening injuries. An 18-year-old is under arrest after a security guard was shot at a University of Texas frat house in Austin. Police say that Daniel Hamilton McGee was charged with aggravated assault after the shooting early Sunday. McGee was kicked out of a party at the Sigma Chi frat house Saturday night. Police say McGee returned to the party and shot the guard in the foot. He's in jail on a $50,000 bond. And two former gymnasts, including an Olympic medalist, are accusing the USA Gymnastics team doctor of sexual abuse. One woman filed a civil lawsuit on Thursday, and the other filed a complaint two weeks ago against Dr. Larry Nassar. Dr. Nassar served as the USA Gymnastics team physician during four Olympics. The woman alleged Dr. Nassar inappropriately touched them and other teammates between 1994 and 2000. Most sexual assault victims don't come forward until later. You know, there's a lot of shame, humiliation, embarrassment that comes along with sexual abuse. And it usually takes them uh, a little bit of time to get the courage to, to come forward and say something about it. And one of the reasons why she wanted to do that is to make sure that it stops and it doesn't happen to anyone else. USA Gymnastics says Dr. Nassar left his position last September. He is currently on faculty at Michigan State University and treats their gymnasts. The university says Dr. Nassar has been temporarily suspended. And the NCAA may be cutting ties with the state of North Carolina. 
The organization has pulled seven championship events from the Tar Heel State, including opening weekend men's basketball games for the coming year due to a state law that some say can lead to discrimination against the LGBT community. In our Decision 2016 coverage, Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton is now talking about her pneumonia diagnosis that forced her to take a break from campaigning, and Donald Trump is not. Here's Brian Moore with the story. At an evening rally in Battleground, North Carolina, Could we have a doctor, please? Donald Trump went off script and off stage to check on a supporter overcome by heat. No mention, though, of Hillary Clinton's health and the pneumonia that forced her off the campaign trail. Instead, Trump focused on Friday's headline, Clinton belittling his supporters as a basket of deplorables. She called these Americans every name in the book, racist, sexist, xenophobic, Islamophobic. She said they were not even American. Clinton told CNN's Anderson Cooper she's feeling better and eager to get back to campaigning. Well, it'll be in the next couple of days. Obviously, I was supposed to rest five days. That's what they told me on Friday, and uh, I didn't follow that uh, very wise advice. While dismissing critics who say she should have been more transparent about her diagnosis, the 68-year-old Clinton and 70-year-old Trump are each now promising to release more information about their health. It's suddenly become a talking point whether or not the candidates want to talk about it. Brian Moore, NBC News, Washington. That was Brian Moore reporting. Hillary Clinton is off the trail again today, but President Obama will be helping out campaigning for her in Philadelphia. Now the time is 4.36. Still ahead, we'll introduce you to Fort Hood Soldier of the Year. Stick with us. All right, so that was a look at our seven days forecast. Uh, but let's go ahead and take a look now at what's trending on the web. Uh, it was a tense moment for Olympic swimmer Ryan Lochte on ABC's Dancing with the Stars Monday night. Lochte and his partner, professional dancer Cheryl Berg, had just performed their dance and were in the process of being critiqued by the judges. When you could hear someone shout liar and judge Carrie and Inaba told them to back off. The show quickly went to commercial break as the show's security dealt with the protesters. When the show returned from commercial break, Lochte says the incident made him feel a little hurt. Now moving on, everyone loves a good Beyonce concert. I know, I know everyone loves her. Uh, well, the Queen of Pop just took one of her performances to the next level. Beyonce was performing single ladies at a concert in St. Louis when her choreographer came on stage to propose to one of Beyonce's backup dancers. So I guess you could say he liked, he liked it, and so, well, he put a ring on it, apparently. Um, and finally, singer Tony Basile is proving age is really just a number. In this viral video, let's see if we can pull it up. There it is. Uh, it was posted on Facebook. The singer is seen performing a fun hip-hop routine for a crowd of people. And I mean, she's just really grooving and getting down to it, so it just shows some people just get better with age. So that's a look at what's trending and going on around the country today. Uh, coming up on Early Texas Today, military reporter Tiffany Pelt introduces us to Fort Hood Soldier of the Year. Stick with us. Welcome back. In today's Military Matters, after a year of competitions, both physical and mental, one Fort Hood soldier proves he is the best of the best. Channel 6 News reporter Tiffany Pelt introduces us to Fort Hood Soldier of the Year. For Sergeant Tarek Mia, give myself a physical challenge. There was something about right. the Army, sense of belonging and brotherhood, that just felt on right. Citizenship and I wanted to serve the country that had adopted my family, so to Born speak. Born in South Africa, his I family did not move to the U.S. until 2001. And when he joined the Army in 2014, it took his family by surprise. No one in my family has ever served in the military. In less than three years well, since standing up to serve his country. Well, I, re I really do think of the States as being my home. Sergeant Mia quickly climbed the ranks. I was always striving to learn more and do better. That determination to be the best he can be is what drove Sergeant Mia to compete in the best warrior competition filled with physically and mentally exhausting challenges. I got lucky and kept winning. But really, it was his desire to push his limits to be the best. And after a year of competitions, Sergeant Mia now holds the title of Fort Hood Soldier of the Year. I was pretty excited. But it's more than just a title for Sergeant Mia. It's about being a role model and pushing others to succeed. Work towards becoming the best that they can be. And while he's already named the best Fort Hood Soldier, 
He continues to push himself every day to be even better. Time to get back to work. <laughs> On Fort Hood, Tiffany Pelt, Channel 6 News. All right, great story. Now, scary moments for a trucker who was eject ejected while driving near Baylor yesterday. Take a look at this. He was turning from University Park's drive onto LaSalle Avenue when his truck overturned, spilling sand and motor oil across the roadway. He fractured his femur and left hand, but is expected to survive. Authorities are still investigating the cause. And still ahead, a four-legged visitor is helping brighten up days for people who are sick. You won't want to miss it. Welcome back. An Idaho hospital had an unlikely four-legged visitor stopping by patients' rooms, but it wasn't a therapy dog, it was a mini horse, and she brought lots of smiles with her. Alex Livingston reports. Standing at 32 and a half inches tall and weighing only 150 pounds, Domi, a therapy mini horse, has a big job. We come to the hospital to visit with patients and family members and staff, pretty much anybody that just needs to have a few minutes to smile and kind of forget what's going on in their life right now. Years ago, Brian Hostad started with a therapy dog. Then he thought of a very different way to help patients. I thought, you know what, I used to ride horses. I grew up around horses. Let's try a miniature horse. And I knew that they would let you train them. So I got, got her and started working with her and she passed her first time with a perfect score. Yeah, pretty girl, yes you are. Arthur Turner is a patient and he says it's not every day you see something like this. How many would say they've been in a hospital with a horse? Anytime you see something unusual, it's a happy situation. You can't make nothing bad out of that at all. It was inviting to me. For Brian, visiting patients, even if it's just for a few minutes, is his true calling. I get their life and I can hear the stories about their childhood and about their family and their parents and you know all of those wonderful stories that that to me is what defines that individual so to me volunteering is just kind of my whole existence I hope it's my entire legacy it has changed my entire life <laughs> That was Alex Livingston reporting. Now the faces of Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton can be seen from the sky in East Texas, etched in eight acres of corn. Every year the owners of Dewberry Farm in Brookshire, that's in Waller County, create a corn maze and plow a new design in the field. Because of the election this year, the owners decided to get in on the political action. On average, it takes a person about 45 minutes to get through the campaign maze, but obviously that is much quicker than the, the campaign cycle will be itself. Now, coming up, we still have some stories. One man is reliving his car accident over and over again. I know that's awful, but we're going to take a look at it in today's viral video. We have that coming up next. All right, there's a final look at your seven day forecast. Now, before you go, I have one more story for you. Go ahead and take a look at this. Uh, so Facebook has a new feature that automatically takes some of your pictures and turns it into a collage of like a memory slideshow. Well, this poor guy had to relive his car accident over and over again when Facebook made a slideshow of pictures from his accident. Uh, but don't worry, the driver is okay and able to laugh it off now. I'm sure he wasn't laughing when it first happened though. Uh, I can only imagine how painful full uh, that must be. All right, well that does it for Early Texas Today. Thank, e thank you to everyone at home for waking up with me this morning and after the break, Chris Radcliffe will join me for Texas Today. Stick with us.